Hey guys, this is Dave. Welcome back to your space investing channel. Thank you so much for tuning in as usual. There's been a ton of updates from a bunch of different space companies over the past couple weeks, and I figured I'd just round them all up and share them with you in one place in our latest edition of Space Stock News. Now, mostly I cover companies that are publicly traded, and therefore retail investors like us have access to them. However, sometimes a news item is so big that I'll talk about it even, as, even if it's mostly to do with a private company, and that is the case in this episode. We do have a ton of different news items, though, from Rocket Lab, Virgin Galactic, Virgin Orbit, Blue Origin, AST Space Mobile, Black Sky, the list goes on and on, Planet Labs as well. So hopefully there's something here for every space investor. Before we get to that, though, if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing that. And if every single like and comment always helps with the algorithm. Thanks for all your support. With that out of the way, let's dive into the latest space stock updates. First up, we have Rocket Lab. Now, after a weather delay, they have finally launched the second batch of their tropic satellites for NASA. The mission was called Coming to a Storm Near You, and it launched on May 26 at Rocket Lab's Launch Complex 1 in New Zealand. This is Rocket Lab's second of two tropics launches for NASA following the first launch back on May 8th. The Tropics CubeSat's required launch to a specific orbit at an altitude of 550 kilometers and an inclination of about 30 degrees, with all four satellites needing to be deployed into their operational orbit within a 60-day period ahead. Rocket Lab has now launched all four satellites across two dedicated launches within 18 days, enabling the Tropics satellites to settle into their orbits and begin commissioning ahead of the 2023 North American storm season, which begins in June. While the Tropic satellites were Rocket Lab's 36th and 37th launches, they were actually unique from most of the company's other missions due to the unique orbital requirements by NASA. To reach such a low inclination from Launch Complex 1, Rocket Lab used Electron's second stage to place the kick stage and tropic satellites into a circular orbit, and then the kick stage's Curie engine carried out a plane change maneuver to position the tropics satellites at the correct 30 degree inclination. So quite a complicated launch in spite of the fact that these are very small satellites and hopefully the use of the kick stage means that this is going to be a higher selling price mission and will help out with the revenue for Rocket Lab in Q2. Now the Virgin Orbit bankruptcy saga, I covered this in a previous video, so I'm not going to go into it in a ton of depth, but Rocket Lab did spend $16 million to acquire the lease to Virgin Orbit's headquarters, which was a massive facility of manufacturing and engineering, as well as a lot of their machining, and, and all this will be used to support Rocket Lab's Neutron program, which they're hoping to get launching by the end of 2024 or early 2025. I do still have some questions around this, like the fact that it's way out on the West Coast, whereas Neutron is planned to be launched out of Virginia, and they also have a facility there. So I'm not too sure how this facility so far away is going to be supporting Neutron. Hopefully that'll become clear in the near future. But from everything I hear, they got a steal of a deal on this $16 million, much less than they would have paid for brand new equipment and facilities. Next up, we have Virgin Galactic. Now, Richard Branson's other company is not quite in as much trouble as Virgin Orbit was. They finally took back to the skies after a couple year delay. They've been grounded since 2021, but on May 25th, they successfully completed their Unity 25 mission, returning to flight after being grounded for a couple years. The company will now prepare for commercial spaceline operations beginning with the Galactic 1 mission planned for late July. I think, as I've said before, this is a very cool vehicle. Congratulations to the team, but personally, I don't see it as a very viable commercial business model. The amount of flights they'll need in order to break even is absolutely massive, and it really can't happen until their next generation vehicle comes online. But even after that vehicle does, uh, personally, this company is not for me to invest in. And my confidence in Richard Branson's companies is even lower after what's happened with Virgin Orbit. So to all you 
Virgin Galactic shareholders out there, I wish you the best. Of course, I wish the company to be successful, and I hope they do prove me wrong, but I, for one, will not be investing in Virgin Galactic. And now we have another update from ULA's Vulcan rocket. This is a competitor to the upcoming Rocket Lab Neutron rocket, and it will be launching Amazon Kuiper satellites into orbit. It has a massive contract for Amazon launches, but we have another delay where Vulcan was supposed to have a hot fire, which regrettably had to be canceled. During the countdown, the team observed a delayed response from the booster engine ignition system that needs further review prior to proceeding with flight readiness firing. The vehicle will be rolled back to the integration facility for testing. No date on when they will retry their hot fire has been announced. The flight readiness firing test at, at Canaveral Space Launch Complex 41 was going to be the first time the combined Vulcan first stage topped with a Centaur second stage would light up for a test firing. There have been several hot fire cancellations already for the Vulcan and delays continue to amount as well as concerns about the timeline that has already slipped several times before. This is in addition to a recent explosion the company encountered at a test facility. And we have an announcement from two new space observation companies, Spire and Black Sky have a partnership to provide real-time AI-driven maritime custody service that can automatically detect, identify, and track more than 270,000 vessels in worldwide open waters along rivers, canals, and while docked at port. The system uses data from Spire's radio frequency monitoring satellite constellation to detect emissions from maritime targets, including the ability to detect and locate dark vessels that are manipulating their reported position in order to conceal nefarious activities. Then, Black Sky's satellites will automatically tip and cue to collect imagery and analyze the images using artificial intelligence to detect vessels, classify each vessel by type, and monitor change over time. So Big Brother will very much be watching for any nefarious ship smugglers out there and hopefully this new venture brings in more revenue for both companies. Planet Labs also had a couple of announcements just recently on May 25th which was a very busy news day. Planet announced a partnership with the United Arab Emirates Space Agency to build a regional satellite data driven loss and damage atlas for climate change resilience. The initiative aims to provide data to a select country facing high degrees of climate risk to help build resilience, make informed policy decisions, and stimulate financial programs for climate adaption and mitigation. With access to high-frequency, high-resolution satellite data and analytical tools, the goal is to make these foundational data sets available to governments, non-government organizations, and related parties so that they can develop insights on climate-related topics. A few days earlier, on May 22nd, Planet announced a new strategic partnerships with two artificial intelligent companies to improve their offerings. These companies' AI-powered analytics enable object detection and classification services on top of Planet's high-frequency, medium, and high-resolution satellite data. In a statement from Planet Labs, they said automated analytics are core to helping our customers understand change and make critical decisions faster. The two companies include a Wisconsin AI startup called Synthetic, as well as a South Korean AI company as well. And then there's been a big announcement from the European Space Agency, or ESA. They've issued a call for new proposals for commercial companies to support cargo missions to the ISS and future commercial space stations. Personally, I don't see this happening before the time the space station is scheduled to stop functioning, but hopefully these future cargo missions will help support a burgeoning commercial space economy and hopefully some of the companies we all know and love will be able to pick up contracts from the ESA for these commercial cargo missions. And a big announcement from NASA that everyone was talking about. I have to cover this, even though Blue Origin is not a publicly traded company. There are some other companies involved in the project who are. Blue Origin has been chosen by NASA to develop the secondary human lander system for NASA's Artemis program that will take astronauts down to the lunar surface. 
The new proposal from Blue Origin is a radical redesign from their original design, and from what I understand from most industry experts and watchers, it's a massive improvement over Blue Origin's original design, so I'm glad to see that they have made progress on their actual design and are not just relying on their litigation and political deals to help get them this contract. AST Space Mobile is also making news by being set to join the Russell 2000 and 3000 indexes of medium cap companies. Not a massive deal, but hopefully it'll support their stock price a little bit as they get added to these indexes and we see some incremental buying for the company. And then less good news for Terran Orbital. It's just been bad and worse for them, unfortunately. On May 26, Bank of America Securities made a significant move by downgrading Terran Orbital Corporation from buy to underperform over liquidity and backlog concerns. This is a rare double downgrade from buy to underperform as opposed to from buy to just hold. And it was also accompanied by a significant reduction in price target, which fell from $7 all the way down to $1.35. Just the day before this on May 25th, Terran Orbital made moves to address their liquidity concerns by entering into an agreement for the sale of 29 million shares of the company's common stock and warrants at the price of $1.28 per share. So this will be massive dilution for current shareholders at a price point of $1.28 per share. I know some shareholders may not be happy because that's probably a lot less than they paid, but it's really a necessity in the company's current financial situation at this point. Now the gross proceeds the company is expecting to receive are approximately $37.1 million before deducting fees and other expenses. Terran Orbital intends to use the proceeds of this offering for general corporate purposes, including capital expenditures, working capital, R&D, and general administration. Now, I don't think this $37 million is nearly enough to put Terran Orbital in the clear. They're still burning money. $37 million isn't a ton, so I would still be concerned for Terran Orbital at this time. Something to be aware of if you're a Terran Orbital shareholder. And of course, the Boeing Starliner disaster continues. And I guess the best thing you can say about Boeing as an investor right now is that at least their space division isn't a massive part of the overall pie for Boeing company. But definitely their space systems division has really not been executing, at least to my mind. And now more bad news for the Boeing Starliner after several delays. So the chair of a NASA safety panel urged the agency not to rush into a crewed test flight for Boeing Starliner calling for an independent deep look at technical issues with the spacecraft. She expressed skepticism that NASA and Boeing will be able to close those known issues with Starliner in time for the next flight currently scheduled for July 21st. Parachute certification remains a large pacing item as well as several other issues, some of which were only recently revealed through analysis of data products as part of the certification process. She mentioned specific open risks of ongoing integration software, as well as battery sidewall rupture concerns, which really doesn't sound good to me. And then speaking of disasters, we have another disaster, also something NASA is paying for, unfortunately. The NASA's Office of the Inspector General issued a report revealing the truly crazy amount of money NASA has had to spend on the SLS engines and their boosters. The report found that efforts to refurbish the former space shuttle RS-25 engines, as well as manufacture new ones and produce solid rocket boosters for the initial Artemis missions, have resulted in about $6 billion of cost increases and more than six years in scheduled delays compared to NASA's original projections. The prime contractors on these projects are Aerojet Rocketdyne and Northrop Grumman. So if you're investors in those companies, be aware that those projects have had a lot of issues as well. The over cost overruns for these boosters and engines alone is more than NASA is spending on two lunar landers from SpaceX and Blue Origin combined. In slightly more exciting news, though, NASA did issue a request for an company proposals for a new lunar terrain vehicle. Each rover must be able to carry two suited astronauts, accommodate a robotic arm or mechanism to support scientific exploration, and survive extreme temperatures at the South Pole. 
Proposals are due by July 10th with the contract award expected by November. NASA requires the lunar terrain vehicle to be ready for use by the Artemis 5 mission, which I do believe will be using Blue Origin's newly accepted lunar lander. I will be watching this contract quite closely as I know that Intuitive Machines, the newest SPAC to go public, as well as Northrop Grumman are working on a lunar terrain vehicle. So very would be very exciting for those investors if they did pick up a lucrative NASA contract. That's all the space company news I have for you today. Let me know if there's any big stories you think I should have mentioned down in the comments below and what you think is most interesting out of all these stories. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you guys have a great week. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.